This Week on ICN. The stories you should have heard, but didn't. Experts fail to understand inflation. Analyst expects a run on the U.S. dollar. A backdoor bailout for Bank of America. Ron Paul not impressed by the new Republicans. Those stories and more next on Informed Citizen News. Hello and welcome to ICN, Informed Citizen News, week of January 24, 2011. There are numerous reports out this month of rising food prices and fear of inflation. Most incorrectly focus on rising prices of food causing inflation, when in reality, inflation is an increase in the money supply that then results in rising prices. JP Morgan issued a warning this month that rising food prices are stoking inflation. What analysts at JP Morgan fail to understand is that true inflation is reflected in almost all prices going up. One must not look at one sector to gauge inflation, but across all commodities. Commodity prices, including coffee, sugar, corn, meats, and oil seeds, rose 4.3% in December alone and shot up 25% for the year after rising 20% in 2009. The recent riots in Tunisia, Algeria, and Jordan were caused by rising prices, particularly in food. One of the better ways to gauge inflation is a broad-based commodity index. The Standard & Poor's GSCI Spot Index of 24 commodities has climbed 24% during the past year to its highest since September of 2008, as prices of raw materials from oil and copper to wheat and cotton have increased. Another method is to simply track what you pay for monthly groceries, gasoline, and utility bills. There's no better way to understand inflation than how it directly affects you. In the latest issue of Barron's, author and trader Victor Sperandeo said that investors in U.S. debt are nearing the breaking point that could see a run on the bank against Treasuries. If that happens, he says, hyperinflation follows and gold prices soar from already record high levels. His article reflects the simple fact that the U.S. is in the precarious position of having to borrow more money in order to pay off existing debt holders. Mr. Sparandeo went on to say, historically, investors lose confidence in government debt when borrowing hits 40% of spending over an extended period of years. The U.S. has been at that level for two years, and unless spending cuts get implemented, it will continue into the foreseeable future. In retrospect, the signs of bubbles were obvious, whether it was real estate, stocks, or tulips back in the 1600s. The current U.S. debt bubble will also become obvious to most people, but only after it bursts. In a prudent move, the Virginia legislature introduced a bill that will establish a joint subcommittee to study whether the Commonwealth should adopt a currency to serve as an alternative to that which is distributed by the Federal Reserve in the event of a major breakdown of the Federal Reserve system. The author of the bill justified the action by directly quoting a Supreme Court ruling that asserted that states have the responsibility to protect the lives, health, and property of citizens and to preserve good order. Throughout history, currencies have failed. It's wise for states to consider a Plan B when it comes to the Federal Reserve note. In what can only be considered as a backdoor bailout this month, Bank of America settled a dispute with government-sponsored entities for $2.6 billion. The purpose of the agreement was to settle the issue of $120 billion in bad mortgages sold by Countrywide to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Bank of America had acquired Countrywide as part of the stopgap measures to save the financial system in 2008. Settling with Fannie and Freddie for two cents on the dollar eliminated the need for the Obama administration to bail out B of A directly. This looks to me like a gift from Tim Geithner. There's politics all over this, said Chris Whalen of Institutional Risk Analytics. Rebel Cole, a real estate and finance professor at DePaul University in Chicago, said, how Freddie can justify this decision to settle all outstanding and potential claims before any of the private label putback lawsuits have been resolved is beyond comprehension. This smells to high heaven and they should be called out. All parties involved in the settlement declined to say anything beyond they are happy to put this behind them and move on. Peter Schiff wrote a well-timed article this month titled, Numismatics are Fool's Gold. Schiff is referring to a specific category of gold coins called numismatics. 
The decline in the dollar and corresponding run-up in the price of gold has caught the attention of many people. They are looking at moving their money into gold and numismatic coins get more hype. Schiff says the reason a numismatic coin can sell for double, triple, or even many multiples of the value of the metal it contains is that a collector values the rarity and or beauty of the coin. For instance, a non-numismatic one-ounce gold coin that was in circulation prior to 1933 may have a 5% premium over the current spot price of gold. That's very little speculative value. As Schiff indicated, numismatics can have markups of over 200%. Like art, one must have a thorough understanding of the numismatic coin market before diving in and making a big purchase. A word of caution, tread carefully around numismatic coins. If you're a new investor to gold and are considering buying, Schiff says, chances are you're making a fast-talking salesman very rich at your expense. Newly elected Governor of New Mexico, Susana Martinez, stormed into office this month by firing all members of the state's Environmental Improvement Board. Martinez was critical of the board's decision to institute cap-and-trade rules in New Mexico. Martinez also halted all proposed and pending regulations. To rescind those rules, the new members of the EIB, which will be appointed by Martinez, will have to hold new public hearings and allow for public comment. The new governor said the fired members could apply for their old positions again and would consider their reemployment on a case-by-case -case basis. Weather manipulation was once relegated to conspiracy circles. Not anymore with the overt cloud seeding in Beijing prior to the 2008 Summer Olympics and now with Abu Dhabi scientists claiming they've created 50 rainstorms in the desert this past summer. Using giant ionizers shaped like stripped down lampshades on steel poles, they claim they can generate fields of negatively charged particles. These promote cloud formation and researchers hope that they could then produce rain. It's believed to be the first time the system has produced rain from clear skies, according to the Sunday Times. This system is a fraction of the cost of a desalination plant. No doubt about it, weather manipulation is now out in the open. Ron Paul threw a little rain on the Republican parade this month by saying that even if Republicans fulfill their pledge to slash $100 billion in federal spending, the United States still only has a 1 in 10 chance to avert an economic catastrophe. He claims a $100 billion cut in federal spending, a goal that leading Republicans now are cautioning may not be realistic, would amount to peanuts. Congress needs to vote on raising the U.S. debt ceiling, which is the maximum amount of debt the federal government can borrow. Ron Paul said he would only vote once to increase the debt ceiling if Congress agrees in turn to balance the budget every year going forward. It's probably a safe bet that he won't have to worry about casting that yes vote anytime soon, as the leadership in Washington doesn't have the fortitude to balance the federal budget. According to Zillow, home prices fell for the 53rd consecutive month in November, taking the decline past that of the Great Depression. Home prices have fallen 26% since their peak in 2006, exceeding the 25.9% drop registered in the five years between 1928 and 1933. According to Stan Humphreys, Zillow's chief economist, for the next six to nine months, the larger factors affecting the housing market that will produce more home price declines will be the excess inventory of homes high negative equity and foreclosure rates and weakened demand due to elevated unemployment. Before things get better, they have to bottom out. That doesn't look like that's happening anytime soon. Thanks for joining us this week. From all of us at Informed Citizen News, see you next time.